Okay. Well, welcome everyone to this North Central Region Aging Network uh, monthly webinar uh, titled Life's Moments from L Memory to Legacy. And I'm Jim Bates with Ohio State University Extension. And with me today is Chelsea Byers, uh, and she is one of the original authors of this curriculum. Um, Chelsea, do you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Jim. My name is Chelsea Byers, as Jim said, and I work for University of Illinois Extension, and I am an Extension educator. Fantastic. And um, Chelsea has uh, completed her comprehensive exams and is officially all but dissertation. So that's why we have, have the ABD on there. So congratulations. I wanted to make sure that we highlighted that. And that's, that, is, that is so awesome. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about this, this curriculum. And, and I'll just say when, when Chelsea mentioned this to me, um, oh, probably two years ago now, maybe a little bit longer, I was so interested in this, uh, this idea of writing life histories because I've been doing something like this for my grandparents or about my grandparents for, for some time now and um, wanted to offer this to um, other extension professionals around the country um, and wanted to offer this also to uh, the people in Ohio, uh, the people that I work with. And so um, she and I did a, a train the trainer uh, last year, and then I was able to do this uh, curriculum with some incarcerated women that I work with on a pretty consistent basis here in Ohio. Um, but let me just uh, I'm gonna go to the next slide here and jump right in. So today's agenda, I want to talk about the purpose, objectives, and outcomes. We'll do a workshop description and then talk a little bit about the evaluation process. So first of all, the purpose, objectives, and outcomes. Really, the purpose of uh, this workshop is to help people write their life stories by creating a dedicated time and place for for everyone to come to and join uh, together with other like-minded folks where we provide feedback and writing tools and ideas. There are a couple of objectives uh, of, the, of the curriculum. The first is really to teach some basic skills of how to write a life history. And the second is to provide some encouraging feedback in a peer learning, peer teaching context. And finally, <clears throat> to develop a community of supportive life history writers. And we see some of these, um, these objectives playing out in some of the outcomes. And um, wanted to cite uh, Dr. Robert Adkinson, um, who published a book in 1998 titled the life story interview. And in this book, he talks about these, these outcomes of writing a life story. And there's, there's quite a list here. Let me just go through this. The first is to gain greater self-knowledge and increased self-esteem or an increased confidence about one's ability to write. The second is to feel a sense of joy, satisfaction, and inner peace as individual stories are shared with others. Third, people may be able to purge or release some of the burdens and, and validate their personal experiences. You know, not all of these stories that are written are positive stories. Some are very difficult, some are very traumatic. But as people write these stories, it helps to relieve and release that burden. The next is uh, related to uh, creating a sense of community with others, not just because other people are writing their stories, but because people have similar experiences that they're sharing. And some people have very different experiences. And it's an opportunity for people to learn about others' lives. 
So that's why it's done in a group setting. The next is to, it can help other people see their lives more clearly and perhaps be an inspiration to them, kind of as a life, um, a self-reflection on a life lived. Next is provide an opportunity for others to better understand them. You know, as, as you share these stories with others, and not all stories are shared with other people, of course, but as stories are shared, people gain a better sense of who you are, who you were uh, during your life. The next is may come to a better understanding of their past, a present, uh, which may help identify goals that they'd like to accomplish in the future. And finally, to provide a, a historical record of life events for family members who come after you. So I just love that list of outcomes. I think there's just so much to, um, so much that comes from an effort to, to write and to share these personal stories. In terms of describing the workshop, um, it is designed as an eight session uh, workshop that usually runs about an hour and 15 minutes or so up to about two hours, depending on the group size, because there's sharing involved, story sharing involved and uh, writing uh, activities that are done during each session. But sometimes this takes a little bit of time for uh, people to, to share their stories, to read their stories to the group. Um, but it can vary. And, and sometimes, um, sometimes it's hard to kind of cut people off or to cut off, the, cut off the story sharing activity um, because it is a very enjoyable experience. And it can also be done in person or virtually. And I've uh, done both, uh, the virtual with uh, with Chelsea as she's in Illinois and I'm in Ohio, and then the in-person um, that she, she and I both have done separately. Now, each of the theme, each of the workshop um, sessions has a theme, and I'll just review some of these uh, for us. The first is introduction to the mater material, a little bit of introduction to Zoom if you're doing virtual, um, and, and a little bit of setting some of the ground rules because what's shared typically is very personal. Um, and so we review some of those, um, some of the common sense uh, uh, guidelines and, and for, for sharing and, and also for confidentiality. The next is, um, the next session, we get into the mindset of writing is, is how I like to think about that. And, and we gather our tools and it takes a little bit of time to kind of jump into, well, how do I, you know, into the writing process and to think, how do I write this story? How do I get into um, a routine? And how do I, how do I get into the, the mindset? We also talk about different writing types. So an autobiography versus a life review uh, and so on. The, the session three is all about family traditions and family history, or cultural traditions, um, community traditions. The next is home. The next is work, followed by people, places, and things. The second to the last is all about the past, present, and future. And then finally, in session eight, there's um, a focus on organizing your stories. And once you've got a lot of these stories written or ideas for stories, how do I organize them so that they make sense to myself or make sense to readers? And then finally, the, th the third part of this that I want to talk about before I turn it over to Chelsea is there are some techniques, topics, and tools discussed in each. You know, as I mentioned, um, as one of the objectives is to give people some tools um, and, and to teach those tools so that people have these tools and techniques to write their stories. So let me run through this list as well. Uh, writing without editing. Um, so just write, 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 write without thinking you have to have everything perfect. So that's an important uh, tool and technique. Timelining, clustering, 
uh, using hindsight. Um, you know, 2020 vision is often clearer looking back than it is sometimes looking forward. Creative description. So for example, we'll give a prompt, almost like a little prefix, to say a home is dot, 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 and then people fill in what is a home. Memory triggers, sensory writing, colorful writing, um, comparison writing. So, you know, thinking about comparing now to then, now to what might be in the future. And then also some chronological versus episodic writing. And that's when it gets into this um, organizing uh, session. You know, do we organize things by chronology? Do we organize things by story theme? Do we organize things by episode? Um, so these are some of the things that we cover. And I'm going to turn it over to Chelsea and to uh, go through session three of the material. And um, uh, we'll record this. And Chelsea, let me know as we go through uh, to go to the next slide. All right. Thanks, Jim, for setting the stage. Um, so we're just going to kind of give you a little flavor of what a session would look like. And so I hope you have some paper and a pen nearby because we're actually going to let you guys do some of the activities. Um, so if you want to flip the slide. So in session three, Jim kind of set the stage of kind of, you know, um, what we would probably kind of go over in session one, talking about the different types of writing, the benefits of life story writing. That's all a lot, a lot of that is covered in session one. And so typically when we um, get into a session, this is kind of the layout of the session. So we give people um, suggested homework we say homework, uh, writing assignments when they leave each class. And we always tell people um, these are just suggestions. They can write on anything. So if they come to class with stories they already want to write, we encourage them to write whatever they want to write because this is their story. Um, but sometimes people do better with writing prompts. And so each week we leave them with some writing prompts and then they come back the following week and we start the session with a story session session or story sharing. And then um, as you can see here, we kind of have our agenda for the session. So people can kind of see where we're going to go with today's session. Um, and uh, so you can go ahead, Jim, and flip the slide. So today's session is focused on family history and traditions. And then we would have our story sharing time. Um, now, this, this uh, slide is actually um, one of our very first activities we do in session one, but we thought that this would be a good um, icebreaker for today's uh, webinar. So um, I would like you guys to pick one of these um, questions and um, write down the answer to it. Um, who gave you your name and why? What is unique about your name? Have you changed your name or do you have a nickname? So just write down a little brief um, answer uh, or story behind any one or more of these questions. I'm just gonna give you just, you know, like two minutes to do this.
give you one more minute. Okay, so the reason we choose this as one of our very first writing activities in the class is because oftentimes it's something that's pretty safe. Um, it's, it's an example of one of the time writing exercises that we do throughout the class. Um, you know, it just takes a few minutes to do. Um, it's pretty easy for people. Um, also, when we're doing the writing exercises, we always encourage people to get something down. We always encourage uh, participants to don't worry about rereading where they're writing, don't worry about fixing mistakes or punctuation, just get stuff on the paper to write freely. Um, you can always go back and correct things later, but if you stop by your writing to correct what you're writing, it often can kind of interrupt your creative juices. And so it's good just to keep writing, 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 and then you can always go back and edit later. Um, and so that's why we do these timed writing assignments in class is just to see how much you can actually get written in small spurts of time. Because a lot of times people don't write because they're like, oh, I don't have time to do it. And throughout the course of the eight weeks, when we do the in-class assignments, they're surprised at how much they can actually write. Obviously on this one, it's not a lot you need to write and it's a very short time period. But when we give them, you know, a five minute writing or 10 minute writing times, they're impressed at how much they can actually get down in that little bit of time. So they see that when they're at home, they can actually get a lot written in little amounts of time if they just sit down and start writing the stories. And, and the more they write, then the easier the flow comes because they get, it's just like practice, right? Anytime you start practicing something, the easier it comes to us. So hopefully you took a moment to actually write one of these answers. So would either of you ladies like to share what you wrote? Sabrina or Karina, or you can pop it in the chat box also, if you're willing. Or Jim, do you have any stories you'd like to share? Oh, Karina, great. Oh, I'm having trouble with your audio. She says, wait one minute. While she's figuring out her audio, um, I'll let you know that my, my name was supposed to be Chelsea Ann until I was born. And then when I was born, they changed it to Chelsea Lynn because my grandpa is Leonard. So I'm actually named after my grandpa Leonard. So I'm Chelsea Lynn. Um, and so uh, it was last minute change. Uh, and so uh, that's where I got my middle name. And my mom's name is Mary Lynn. So I'm also named after my mom. It looks like Sabrina just turned on her camera. So go ahead, Sabrina. Yes. I'll share quickly. Um, my name is, my maiden name was Sabrina Kazee. I was married and I became Sabrina Simon, but I've been divorced 20 years. I kept my married name because I had kids at that time. Mm -hmm. And now I long for my maiden name. Yes. Because it's just, you know, that's that's me. I'm Sabrina Kazee. I'm not mm -hmm. Sabrina Simon. So that's my story with the name. I can understand that, Sabrina. I can understand that. So I got married later in life. And so everybody already knew me as Chelsea Byers. And my husband's name is Gerstenecker. And so when I got married, I said, I'm keeping Byers professionally. And he was like, that's fine. And I said, I'll, I'll be your wife. I'll be Gerstenecker together with you. But professionally, everybody knows me as Byers. And I said, so I'm just, I'm going to keep it as Byers. And for a while, I try to go by Byers Gerstenecker, but it's so long. Anytime I was interviewed, people would say, do you want Byers or Gerstenecker? They didn't want to put it all together. And I was like, this is too complicated. And so professionally, I just go as Byers because it's easier. <laughs> but you're right. It's, it's something about who you are, right? So I understand that. Karina, did you want to try again? Is this audio any better? Right yes, now? it's perfect. Okay, okay great. Um, well, uh, probably um, 
what's unique about my name is that it takes a while for people to get it if they haven't heard it before they want to change it to a number of different things that don't even have the same letters in them in it <laughs> so um yeah that's it uh that's been a challenge my whole life and i'm like why did my mother do this to me you know bless her heart um but apparently she had an aunt carrie who was her favorite and she wanted me to go by Carrie. So she was going to shorten it to K-A-R-I, mm -hmm. um, but my dad didn't like that. And then it never happened. So yeah, yeah, there's, there's usually a story behind names. And that's why this is a fun one to start with because people usually have some kind of story behind a name. So yeah. thank you both for sharing. Um, our kids' names are Phoebe and Adina. And sometimes people say phobie or they just can't even get it out. And Adina never gets Adina. She gets Adina or Adiana or like, like you said, they throw extra letters in there that aren't in there. And she's like, I don't even understand. It's pretty simple. And I'm like, clearly it's not. So um, yeah. And Phoebe's like, sometimes they don't, they, they actually make up names, not even Phoebe. So um, it's just interesting when you think, oh, it's not that hard, but I guess it is. And my last, my married last name is 12 letters and it's phonetically exactly how it's spelled, but people butcher it all the time. Um, I think they just get overwhelmed because it's so many letters. So yeah, thank you for sharing. Jim, did you want to add anything or otherwise we can go forward? Okay. All right. And here's just a, um, a quote um, that I think is nice. Uh, I like very much people telling me about their childhood, but they'll have to be quick or else I'll tell them, I'll be telling them about mine. Um, you know, people enjoy reminiscing and sharing stories from the past, especially about childhood, right? Um, and the same goes for family stories, because oftentimes we have, you know, um, fun stories about um, family members and um, it's fun to reminisce about days gone by. Um, some family stories uh, can be told, can be centered around the concept of ethnicity, cultural backgrounds, um, sometimes about ancestry from where we come from or, you know, family traditions. Um, and these all are kind of, you know, the tapestry of our lives, right? They make up who we are. Um, and sometimes that information is things that have been shared to us, maybe orally, maybe shared during um, holidays. And sometimes we might not know that information. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's good for us to um, try to learn that information or maybe to write it down before the people who know that information are no longer with us. So go ahead, Jim. Uh, so in, in this session, a lot of times we talk about ways that family histories can be shared and the many different forms. Um, so family histories, you know, can be uh talked about in many ways through oral stories, like I said, written stories, some families uh, work on genealogy, sometimes people have different keepsakes that have been passed through families, and stories are told through those keepsakes or maybe historical documents, um, and so sometimes stories are passed through generation and generation, um, uh, and sometimes, you know, there might be uh, different, you know, documents that are saved, um, and sometimes documents are not saved. Um, I always like to tell the story that my grandma and grandpa wrote to each other during World War II, and um, before my grandparents died, they burned all the letters, and so we did not get privy to those letters. They decided that they were between them, and they didn't want those shared, and I think that that's so sad, but it was their letters, and so they weren't for us, um, but they reread them, um, in their older age, and then they decided to burn them. And so I thought that was sweet for them, but sad for us, I guess. Um, but, you know, there's all kinds of different ways of gathering um, historical information for your family. Um, and so we just kind of talk about that in the class. And then people share, you know, ways that they, they might have information about their families um, and, you know, and then ways that they can learn more. Okay, Jim. Um, and then we talk about, um, you know, with life story writing, you know, what are people's goals? Is it to leave a legacy for your family members? Is it for you? Um, you, know, you know, why are they doing this? Um, 
And then we have an in-class writing assignment here, and we ask people to take, you know, five minutes to answer these questions the best that they can. Um, and you can, you know, just pick any of them. Like, what do you know about your family's heritage or background? Who was the first in your family to come to the United States? What do you know about your ancestors before you? Have you shared information with younger family members? What ethnic traditions, celebrations do you have in your family? Um, so for time's sake, uh, maybe we can just talk about, um, are there any certain ethnic traditions or celebrations that you have in your family? Does anybody wanna share anything? Either you can unmute yourself or throw it in the chat box. Is there anything that you, that you do that you've passed on? It has been passed down through the family to celebrate. We always celebrate St. Nicholas Day on December 6th. That's not normal. Not uh, everybody does that. I think it's a German tradition. So, um, sometimes it's a recipe, maybe it's a certain food, a certain thing at a holiday. Um, but it's always interesting to, you know, learn about everybody's certain things. I just learned last night, a coworker of mine for the last 15 years, uh, uh, she had lamb every uh, every Sunday at her grandma's house, and she said she hates lamb. And I just learned that about her, and she's Irish. So that was something that I just learned about her. Um, oh, yep. Sorry, Sabrina. Have a good one. Um, so that was something for her Irish traditions. So um, Okay. Karina, did you have anything you wanted to share? Oops. We're good. <laughs> okay. All right, we can go to the next one, Jim. And then in this session, we talk about oral stories. And um, we talk about how a lot of times families share uh, stories verbally um, in the family. And chances are a lot of times, you know, Families have those little nuggets of family history or lore by older relatives. And sometimes we, you know, don't know if, you know, how much of that story is true or, or, you know, um, you know, my, my friend Molly always talks about her, her gram always used to tease her that she was a rocket. And she's like, I know my gram was not a rocket. Right. Um, but her, her gram did like to dance, but, um, you know, some, some of them are, uh, interesting stories, um, and we talk about what kind of family stories were passed down to you orally and who told you the story. Um, you know, so what kind of story was told to you in childhood or some point in life? Um, and then we ask people to write down as many details as they can, uh, because a lot of times, you know, those stories are just passed down orally and we don't have, you know, written documents of those. Um, do either of you guys have any stories that you want to share? As an example, looks like Jim unmuted. I've heard that we have uh, Native American ancestry, but I haven't been able to see it on the on our family tree. Um, we have something uh, uh, in family search, uh, and uh, so anyway, that that may be true. It may be false, but I haven't been able to verify it. Mm -hmm. Good. That's a great example. Um, there's a picture that my aunts have talked about that there's a picture of Teddy Roosevelt at my great grandpa's farm. And they said that he used to sell horses to Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders. So that's one that has been told. Uh, now, I've never seen the picture, but they, they said that when they were growing up, that was always uh, something that was told in, in their family. So, um, uh, so, you know, now whether that was really their farm or just a farm, but that's what they said was that, that Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders, they sold, they sold horses to him way, way back in the day. So who knows, right? Um, my great grandpa, I did, I was, my great grandpa was alive when I was a child. So, but I didn't know that story when I was a kid, I was too young. So, but you know, we never know, right? Part of our, part of our, part of our past. Um, all right, next slide, Jim. Uh, so then, you know, we talk about other family traditions in this lesson. Um, and so we asked, participants to take a moment to think about, you know, different rituals, customs, and traditions that they remember um, from the family that they grew up in or in the family that they've created. So uh, whatever group that they're part of by definition of a family. So whether that's, you know, um, friends, 
family, um, you know, whoever they want to write about and uh, they deem as a family. Um, family traditions are usually great story starters. So um, it could be a story about a holiday. It could be a story about food. A lot of times special holiday recipes, um, you know, uh, you know, a certain person always brings a certain a certain dish, you know, uh, to a certain gathering. Um, but a lot of times our gatherings do, you know, focus around food or, uh, you know, is it always at a certain place or um, is it always changing? Uh, but there's lots of story ideas that can come from, you know, family traditions. And do we know where those family traditions started? Or we don't really know where they started, but this is what we do as a family. Um, one of them that um, cracks people up all the time, so I have to share it, is uh, my freshman year of college, we were in our dorm, um, and we were having a party before the holidays, and our RA asked, you know, what are you most looking forward to going home for for Christmas? And I was like, chicken salad sandwiches for Christmas. And everybody looked at me like, that's what you're looking forward to for Christmas. And I thought that that was normal. Like in my, you know, just turned 18 year old self, I was like, you don't all have chicken salad sandwiches for Christmas. Like that's, that's Christmas. My, my grandma makes the best homemade chicken salad sandwiches and Christmas Eve. That's what we eat is, I mean, there's other food, don't get me wrong, but, and you know, what you think that you do is normal for everybody else. You learn is not, <laughs> it opens your eyes to the world, right? Um, and so to this day, um, and, and they're green, by the way, because she used pickled, canning pickles in, in the juice of the canned pickles. So they're like bright green, like like kind of electric green. And I thought that that was normal. And so when people come over and they see us, when you introduce people into your family, they're like, chicken salad sandwich is very interesting. And so um, now that my grandma is um, in her 90s, uh, my aunts have all tried to learn and replicate her recipe because, of course, there's no recipe written down. And every year we're like, not quite right yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but we still have chicken salad sandwiches for, you know, Christmas Eve um, for a meal. And my aunts are still trying to replicate that that uh, recipe. Uh, Chelsea, is, is it with grapes and celery, too? No, no. it is. Okay. Um, it is not. It is. It is, um, it has nothing crunchy in it, but it is so good. So, um, but yeah, so my mom was asking my dad this year to see if she was going to give it a try because two of my aunts have tried and not quite nailed it. And so my mom's like, well, maybe it's our turn to try it. And, but yeah, so that's why it's the joke is which, which of my mom is the oldest of seven daughters. So she's like, maybe it's my turn to try and give it a go. So it's always a joke. Like who's going to try it this year to see if they can get it closer to grandma's recipe. So, but yeah. So, so anyway, we talk about family traditions in this one, you know, and give people an opportunity to try to write, you know, uh, an, an in-class activity about family traditions. Is there anything that you guys would like to share on this one? You know, just the reflection on, yeah, who, who people, what, uh, what food people brought to a certain meal and realizing, you know, we haven't had that gathering for 20 years you know as people have have passed away and as people have moved away it's um we just haven't gotten back together with the same people um <clears throat> we did uh, i talked to two of my cousins kind of one on each side of siblings um the children of siblings i should say uh and then and then me and so all three of us um advertised let's do a, a virtual family reunion so last um, December 26th um, we got as many people together as we could and and um, you know I think I think if everyone could have been there it would have been about 40 different families but it was it was smaller than that but it was good and I heard actually some good feedback from uh, one of my cousins uh, his wife, um, when I was visiting them uh, earlier this fall. Um, so, you know, maybe we start a new tradition because the other one kind of fell off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And sometimes people talk about traditions that have gone gone to the wayside or past because people have gone, or sometimes people talk about how traditions traditions have altered over the years. And so, 
Um, yeah, so, you know, and I always tell people, you know, these are just suggested writings, and so they get to kind of write what they want, but this is just to get people thinking, to trigger their memories, and then they get to take the story where they want to go, and so um, these are always writings for them, and uh, so it's always great to, though, to hear people share, and one thing when we're doing the sharing, people are always have the right to pass. Nobody has to share their stories, so if they're very personal, um they they don't have they don't have to share so everybody always has the right to pass when we're going around the room and people are talking about their their stories they always have the right to share nobody has has to share um so we can go on to the next one jim this one's called remembering everyday traditions um and this one you know this is about our everyday sometimes um there's so many stories in what we consider the mundane maybe um, or things that we don't even think about as traditions. So whether, you know, somebody slipped a note into their child's lunchbox, or they had a certain night routine, or, um, you know, just simple daily activities that became rituals in their, their household. Uh, you know, it's a certain saying that that you have in your family, um, that when you say it, it, it makes you think of a certain person. Um, it's those kind of everyday stories, um, everyday traditions, you know, that you want to be remembered and, and put on paper. Um, so this is a chance for, you know, the participants to kind of brainstorm everyday rituals and everyday traditions. And, and in this activity, we just kind of have them actually kind of brainstorm um, those things. And then we, we consider this like a brainstorm of, writing topics for later so we don't actually write about these in class but it's like a brainstorm for future writing writing later and so they kind of just do a column for family traditions and a column for everyday traditions and then that's that's you know writing assignments that they can think about coming back to at another time because there's only so much time in class um so you can go ahead to the next the next one jim And then at the end of each class, we leave the class with um, some suggested writing assignments for each week. And again, these are just um, suggested writing prompts and they can pick any of the writing prompts to write about, or we encourage them to write about anything that they want to write about. Um, some people come to the class again with an idea of what they already want to write about and some just need kind of some guidance. And so usually the writing assignments kind of have something to do with the theme of the week. And so for this week, these were some of the suggested writing assignments. So describe one or more things that stand out about each of your siblings. Um, if you do not have siblings, choose friends or cousins or somebody else. Um, what are your mother or father's best traits? What is one thing you've saved from your parents or grandparents? Describe a typical day with your family when you were a child. What was your neighborhood or town like? Um, I wish I could go back and touch. And, and that one is leading us into, um, you know, thinking about our senses, because one of the sessions talks about our senses and how we can really trigger our memories by engaging our senses. So when we think about sounds or smells or um, feelings or taste and how, and so that's, that's one of those um, memory triggers to try to help think about, you know, um, you know, was there a certain, you know, Afghan that you really loved or, you know, was it somebody's hand or was it, you know, um, you know, you know, uh, the feeling of a certain table in your grandparents' kitchen that you're always, you know, sitting at or, um, you know, who knows what it is. But a lot of times when we think about um, one of our senses, it can really bring back a lot of memories because our memories are tied a lot of times with our, our senses. Um, and so we encourage people just to, you know, think about, you know, writing about one of these or anything else or something that was triggered through the, you know, the class. Um, and then they can bring those writings back the next week. And then that's how we begin the next class period. Um, okay. Um, so that's kind of like how a class is kind of built um, and each week kind of goes like that where we come back, you know, we, we share our stories, we kind of have a lesson, we have in-class writing assignments, we do some brainstorming, um, we usually have some kind of um, different kind of brainstorm technique to think about additional writing 
topics. And then we do end always with some um, suggested writing topics to have as homework. So now I'm gonna pass it back to Jim and he can kind of talk about some evaluation from this program. You know, just to comment on um, the everyday traditions, I think those are probably the most interesting aspect of life. Um, <clears throat> You know, and and I think back to having read through um, the Little House on the Prairie books, and just kind of she details a lot of these just kind of mundane daily mm -hmm. activities. Um, and I've always been curious. Well, well, did my grandparents, great grandparents, great great grandparents, you know, how did they live? You know, what kinds of cooking um tools did they have you know how did they um you know where did they go to the bathroom like how did they set that up you know when they were just new to um you know they just my my grandpa was born in a dugout in a wash in arizona you know mm -hmm. and it was it was on a on a hopi reservation and um you know and so it's like, and they use my grandma's, my great grandma's carpet to cover the dugout. You know, it's like, how in the, that's, that's all the detail I have. And so it's these mundane daily life activities that are just so um, interesting to me. And I think would be of interest to, to readers uh, in the future. But uh, so, and, and then these homework assignments, or these homeworks, um, give people a chance to write those things down. And I, you know, nobody knows your story like you do so the more detail the better um and as as you get into it. go ahead sorry and one thing that from past participants that um well which will lead into what jim's going to talk about is people always say they're writing it for their loved ones but then they find all this benefit for themselves as they're writing it but also it's interesting how some people share it with their siblings while they're writing and then they share the writing prompts with their siblings and they'll write along with them or they'll, they'll share stories to get more details. They'll be like, okay, I'm <laughs> writing about this. What do you remember about this? So then they'll get more details from their memories or they'll share the stories with like kids as they're writing. And then each week they'll, the kids will be like, why'd you write about this week? Cause they're, they're, they're so intrigued. Um, or some of them are like, nope, you can get it when I'm done. Or, you know, I'm like, well, you know, we're not going to be done in eight weeks. It's an ongoing process after the eight weeks. This is just to get people started. Um, but it's interesting to, how people share, like, what they do with it as they're starting, because it just kind of, it's just piquing people's interest, right? Because it does get people going. But then, like, as they talk about the memories, more memories come back, or they they call somebody and they're like, yeah. What do you remember about, you know, summers on grandma and grandpa's farm? Or what do you remember about, you know, holidays at such and such place? And, and you know, that's how like those to add richness to their stories or to get more details, like they kind of remember and then they can start talking about it. And then the memories kind of also start triggering more. And so that's it's fun when people start talking about how they engage other people in the process. I always think that that's fun. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting idea. Mm -hmm. That would be really that would be really interesting. Well, there's also uh, an evaluation component to this, um, and there are some uh, quantitative uh, items. Uh, the first four here use a, a Likert scale. The last one uses a um, check all that apply list of list of boxes, um, and these are related to what Chelsea was talking about. Um, and what I mentioned at the beginning of, uh, as well, related to, um, set, set, you know, have you have you gained a sense of satisfaction, um, uh, and, um, you know, writing these stories? Have you increased in your confidence and 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 uh, as you've written these stories, as you've written these, um, <clears throat> so more of that qualitative or, you know, kind of personal impact types of. Uh, items. And then there's some open-ended response items, um, just kind of about uh, the in-class writing activities, in-class story sharing, and then also kind of some logistics format and length. Um, and there's also questions about Zoom and people's getting getting people's opinions about um, about the class in, in a written way so that uh, 
those can be used for um, further improvements as well. So in conclusion, you know, these, um, this is a, this is a, a unique um, workshop, a unique uh, curriculum, and participants do seem to leave at least uh, looking at um, the evaluation, they leave with some basic writing skills. They leave with increased confidence in their writing skills um, and in their storytelling abilities. Um, they're also developing and they, they leave with a community of others writing right along with them. Um, and they also leave with some material to share with others, some stories that they've written, really. Um, Chelsea, could you just talk about this, this third one here, the community of others writing, just to kind of give us a sense of, you've had some of these groups, you and Molly have had groups that have gone on for a lot longer than the eight weeks. Or, yeah. Yeah, so um, what people have found is that they have found no matter what walk of life they come from, they find community with the people that they they meet through the life story writing. Um, so whether they grew up in the same time frame or um, they can, you know, they might have a shared background of some kind or, or just people have kind of a common thread. They, they will always find common threads amongst each other in the class and they, they don't want to leave. Um, obviously, when they share their stories, they're, they're sharing part of themselves. And so they become friends and they become close. And so um, they always are like, we don't want this to end. And so um, a lot of times the groups uh, want to continue. So we've done like part two, part three, and some of the groups have continued. And then there's a point where we have to push the birds out of the nest and say, okay, you need to go start meeting on your own. Um, and, and some have, they've, they've continued to meet at like, you know, like a, a coffee shop or, you know, and they've kept that community going. So um, so if it's a time in their life where they're, they're, you know, losing friends, they have become supports for each other. Um, and they keep, they keep each other writing they hold each other accountable, um, which I think is phenomenal. Um, but they do find a community with each other because they're all trying to do the same, the same work of, you know, writing stories. And so, um, you know, they're like, but we can't do it without you. I'm like, oh, but you can, you know, um, you know, we get you started. Um, we can kind of keep you going. But then there's a point where I'm like, okay, fly, fly birdies, you can do it. Um, and we kind of help facilitate that um, initially, but then they, they can kind of go do it on their own. But it's, you'd be, as a facilitator, you don't want them to leave either because you become invested in their stories as well. Um, and it's so much fun to, to learn about them and, and, um, to, you know, cause they are sharing part of their lives with you. Um, but it's like Jim said, they do become a community, um, and it's, it's awesome to see. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for joining us on this webinar. And, uh, I really have enjoyed uh, learning about this curriculum, learning about and doing it. Um, and, um, you know, we do have a, a brief evaluation about this webinar. And then if you would like some more information, um, please reach out to, to Chelsea directly. I've got her uh, email here. And Chelsea put the, uh, the evaluation link into uh, the chat box too. So thank you. Um, and then, Chelsea, there is one more. Mm -hmm. uh, next month, um, Molly, my coworker Molly and I are going to talk about a brain health program that we wrote called Wits Workout. And um, our, we, we did a research uh, pilot on it this past year. And we're going to talk about um, what we learned from our randomized control trial with this um, across Illinois. Um, and so if you're interested in learning more about that, Molly and I are going to talk about that next month on December 2nd. So great. Thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, we'll get this up on YouTube and it'll be archived uh, available from the ncran.org website.